Hello, and thank you for tuning into the Progressive Parent YouTube channel. The topic of today's discussion is sharing, and should we be trying to teach our children to share by coercing or forcing them to do that? I would like to discuss a recent blog post from the website birthingbeautifulideas.com, but first I'd like to start with a quote from A.S. Neil, who wrote the book Summerhill based on his experiences as headmaster of Summerhill School in England. He says, every child is an egotist and the world belongs to him. When he has an apple, his one wish is to eat that apple. The chief result of mothers encouraging him to share it with his little brother is to make him hate the little brother. Altruism comes naturally if the child is not taught to be unselfish. It probably never comes at all if the child has been forced to be unselfish. By suppressing the child's selfishness, the mother is fixing that selfishness forever. So that's an interesting quote, which seems to suggest that if we try to force moral values onto children before they're of the right age to understand those moral values, it might actually have the opposite effect from what we want. Now this kind of stands to reason when we understand that when a child is born, they are completely egocentric. As far as they're concerned, everything, all of their experience is them. And it takes them a long time before they actually realize that if they can't see something, it still exists. It takes them a bit longer still to realize that if they leave something somewhere, when they come back, it will still be there, provided someone hasn't moved it. And even longer still to realize that other people have minds and subjective experiences. So here is a blog post which is called Not Sharing Isn't As Scary As You Think It Is and it becomes from birthingbeautifulideas.com. My kids go to a preschool where it's okay not to share. In fact, it's not just okay. Refraining from the compulsory sharing that was part and parcel of many of our preschool years is even encouraged at this school. In case you're worrying, no, the kids who attend this school aren't turning into self-centered, compassionless sociopaths because of this policy. Quite the contrary. As I see it, the it's okay not to share policy actually cultivates a sense of compassion and generosity in children, but more on that in a second. Just last week, I caught a segment on Good Morning America about another preschool where kids aren't forced to share. As with so many reactions to a no force sharing policy, the GMA anchors showed some scepticism towards the practice. Won't it just make kids more selfish? It sounds great, but I just can't see myself not making my kids share with one another. Allowing kids not to share? That sounds ridiculous. And I get this. Many of us live in a culture where sharing is seen as an unequivocal good. We're telling kids that they must share their toys as expected in parenting circles, where the very practice of demanding that children share their toys with others is seen as necessary step in planting seeds of kindness and generosity. Now, before I go on, I just want to comment on what we've read. It says many of us live in a culture where sharing is seen as an unequivocal good, but having said that, you wouldn't be expected to share your car unless you wanted to. You wouldn't certainly be expected to share your house. And children don't really have that much stuff. So whatever they have tends to be rather important to them. Also, altruism isn't possible without choice. I mean, you wouldn't say that if I forced my neighbor to sell their car and give money to charity, that that was a very generous neighbor because I just forced him to do that. It, it wouldn't be an act of generosity. So altruism is not possible without choice. And if we want to give our children the opportunity to learn altruism, perhaps the way to do that is to model the kind of behaviors we want and let them discover the pleasure of doing things which make other people happy, like sharing, for themselves. 
I want to continue with another excerpt from the blog post, and it goes as follows. So what does the no force sharing policy look like? When one child is playing with a toy, they do not have to share it with anyone else until they decide they're done with it. Other children who want to play with the toy must wait until that turn is done too. If many children are waiting for a turn with a toy, then a teacher makes a turn list. If they don't get through the entire list by the end of the school day, then the list is honoured on the next day of class. That's pretty much it. To interject once again, the sense of this should be seen. I mean, if certain children abuse the right to the share list or to their turn, they'll notice that other children have less goodwill towards them and uh, perhaps will become more grabbish with the toys. So it's not like this happens in a vacuum and there's no negative consequences for abusing the rule. These things arise rather naturally amongst us. I mean, if our friends share their things with us but always come asking for us to share our things with them, after some time I'm sure we'd get pretty tired of this and they'd get a sense of our resentment. On the other hand, if children see other children honouring the share list, then they will themselves will feel encouraged to also put their best face on, not abuse the share list and use toys for as long as is reasonable. The blog goes on to say that Heather Shoemaker, author of the book It's OK Not To Share, reveals these insights about genuine sharing and the less preferable sharing on demand in her book. Preschool age children take their play very seriously. If they don't want to share a toy, it's often because they're busy with what they see as their work. When a child has to wait for a toy, they learn a valuable lesson in impulse control. When a child has the right to play with a toy until their turn is done, they learn a valuable lesson about how their play or their work is respected by the adults around them. When a no-force sharing policy is enforced, children develop confidence in their ability to wait their turn with a toy or a book. When a sharing on demand policy is enforced, children might learn to associate sharing with feeling bad or mad about giving up a toy, with losing control or with the act of demanding instead of waiting patiently. The author of the blog adds, and in addition to these points, what I love about a no force sharing policy is this, it puts a lot of power into the kids' hands, power that two, three, four and five-year-olds often feel as if they're lacking. So there's the idea developed there, that by giving responsibility to children, they learn how to use that responsibility wisely. And bearing in mind again that children don't have much stuff, I would suggest, can you imagine that forcing them to share what little they do have will create a tendency of kindness and a good attitude towards sharing or will in fact have the reverse effect and make them more grabbish. I hope you've got something out of this post. If you have, please share it in whatever social media you use and send it to other parents and teachers you know. Thank you very much for listening. If you have a topic you'd like to hear discussed in future videos, please don't hesitate to leave a comment 